Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, Has Blonte Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is going to be a continuation of the plant review series, and I'm surprised actually that I haven't done a review about this plant. Now I say plant as if it's just the one, but I think actually I might touch on three different variants of the plant. It will make sense and hopefully the title will give most of this away anyway. But yes, today I want to talk about the Epipremnum penatum. And at the same time, I'm probably going to touch on Epipremnum penatum variegata, so the white variegated Epipremnum penata. I think there's an aurea now as well. I haven't got that, so I can't really review that. And I will also be talking about the Epipremnum penatum Cebu blue. Where I think sometimes it is just called the Epipremnum Cebu Blue. Pretty sure it's an off branch of the same plant species. I might be wrong, but it might be its own species. But most of these plants have very similar morphology, and I have got all three of them. So I would like to kind of cover them all in the one video. So it'll be a one off for everything, basically. Now, before we get into anything further, let's lay down some ground rules. So if you are coming back as usual, welcome back. It's nice to have you. So you know the deal at this point. Down below in the progress bar, you can skip to your favorite chapter. If you are joining for the first time, the ground rules will probably be something new for you. So the things I always say on these videos is I cannot make these reviews unbiased. It is my biased opinion about growing my specific plants in my specific conditions. And my specific conditions is growing in a conservatory in the UK and whatever that might mean in terms of humidity, light, all of the above, essentially cold or heat. Ah. So I can't make it unbiased. It is my opinion. However, one thing that I always do say on these videos is if you do have this plant and you want to kind of share your review down below, please do so. But what I always kind of encourage people to do is be as descriptive as you want to be, really. Because if somebody's looking at it, they can kind of say, okay, this individual has got this plant that I'm thinking about getting or I've just got, and they've got similar conditions and they do similar care to me. This is probably how I might find owning this plant. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into the first topic. So you might notice I've not got any of the plants in my hand at the moment. I do have a couple, so I've got one. So this, believe it or not, even though it's very, very light at the moment, and hopefully it will focus if I just hide my head, that is a propagation or a cutting of the Cebu Blue. This is a propagation or a cutting of the Epipremnum penatum variegata. Now, I also do have the... Epipremnum penatum, the standard form of the Epipremnum penatum, and I will hopefully be adding pictures or videos here. And the reason why I don't have that one with me is because it's currently sitting behind two other very large plants, so behind my Monstera albo and my Burley Marks variegata, and it's right against the window, and just that's not going anywhere anytime soon, basically. However, that one is quite large, it's quite established at this point. It has fenestrated. I also have my Frankenstein Epipremnum, which I've created in the bathroom upstairs. Anybody who has seen the tour of my house for house plants would have seen that. And that is an Epipremnum penatum and an Epipremnum amplicium combined into one major pot. I've got two spare bits of wood that I had from deconstructing some DIY that I did a few years back at this point. So I've kind of put it in the bathroom just so they can both climb together because I think they are quite complementary. The Epipremnum amplicium is quite a strappy leafed and the Epipremnum penatum will get the splits. Interesting thing on this background section, and this came up on another review video that I was talking about my Monstera Albo, and I was debating on the fact that for many, many years now, most of us has been calling the splits on the Monstera Deliciosa or the Albo or the Thai, all of these things, we've been calling them fenestrations. Now, there is a lot of debate going around at the moment that those are not actually fenestrations. 
fenestrations are actually the holes along the midrib. So what we would have classed before as secondary fenestrations. And I'll hopefully be adding a picture here so you might be able to see what I mean. There was somebody that mentioned, and I didn't look into this in too, too much detail. Do all, let me know what you think down below. But they were saying the splits should actually be called pinations. And it's because something, when it's pinate, it's split. And I think the, the dictionary definition is it's got feather-like leaves or feather-like structures. And it's that kind of splitting that happens on the leaf, which kind of makes sense when you look at plants like the Epipremnum pinnatum. And it's called the pinnatum because it's got those splits or what we used to call as fenestrations. Very interesting topic. As I said, I'm not here to claim that that is exactly the case, but it was a really interesting conversation that I was having in that video that I thought would be appropriate to mention in the background section of this video. Now, the Epipremnum pinnatum is an interesting one, the standard Epipremnum pinnatum, because when I got mine many, many years ago, and the time frame that I will put for this review would be for that original plant, the albo variegated one and the Cebu blue came up later, I think, the Albo variegated, at least the versions that I've got at the moment, and I will talk about this a bit later, I have had for maybe a year less than I've had the main Epipremnum pinnatum. The variegated plant has been a year less than that, if that makes sense. So oh, I hate doing this on video because I'm not entirely sure I'm going to remember this. I think the Epipremnum pinnatum that I've had, I've had for either three or four years, which means the Albo I would have had for two to three years. And the Cebu Blue took me a long time to get the Cebu Blue for a year or two. I think it's probably two years actually for the Cebu Blue. But yes, and I will be adding some pictures here. So the Penatum, I don't know whether or not I actually ever took pictures of the Epipremnum Variegata, I think the, the Penatum variegated one, I might have a picture. I don't know if I ever did for the Cebu Blue, but if I do, I will add them all here. And yeah, the background on these was the Penatum I got from a garden center and it was relatively easy to find at that point when it was people were really starting to get into the Cebu Blue as well. I'm just like, did I get a Cebu Blue? Did they not know what they were selling? Because some of those did get sold in some plant shops and garden centers. A lot of them weren't. A lot of them were just panatums. And the panatums, depending on the kind of light and how it's reflecting on it, sometimes will have a bit of a bluey tint to the leaves. And that's what was confusing a lot of people. However, the Epipremnum Cebu Blue, that one, when you do actually get it in front of you, you realize the difference between the coloration of the foliage. And obviously, the Cebu Blue, the reason why you're getting it is because it's got that kind of glaucous and it's that kind of silvery, bluey sheen that you would get. And the variegata or the variegated uh, panatum, I got as a trade. I don't know if it was a trade, actually. I think it was actually a friend that sent it over. And I don't know if, if you've been around for long enough, you might have seen me mention a very small, and I think I mentioned it in my prop box video. There's a very small, now very small, Philodendron Pring Princess that I got from a friend. And that individual also sent me um, Epipremnum Pinatum variegated to try out. And that was at the beginning of my Lechuza Pond journey to kind of say, look, try this. That individual did also say that the Epipremnum Pinatum takes a very long time to root or do anything in semi hydro. Years later, I would agree. So a bit of a spoiler there, but I'll touch on that a bit more on accessories and care. And I think the Cebu Blue, I had multiple, I think two or three Cebu Blues that I might have got kind of bouncing around somewhere. Those have mainly been from swaps, basically. So either plant swaps, I think it was mainly from plant swaps, actually. I don't think I've ever paid for the variegated or the Cebu Blue. I've got it through swaps, basically. But yeah, and I think all of them are very different plants. All three are very different plants. The Penatum, as I said, is quite huge. The other two, less so. But I think that's enough on the background section. Let's move on to the next topic.
Now, continue on with availability, because I've mentioned this on a previous video. Somebody did mention, look, put the availability after the background, and I'm giving this a try. As I said in the previous video, do let me know in the comments down below whether or not this is jarring for too many people and you want me to put the availability where I used to have it. I'm just a creature of habit, so I can understand if it might be a bit jarring for a few people. So I get it. But yeah, in terms of availability for this, again, I'll just continue on the story that I was talking about in the background. When I got the Panatum, that was relatively easily available. And I think it's still the case many years later. So you can usually get it in plant stores, at least here in the UK. You can get it in plant stores. You can find it for relatively affordable. So for an okay established plant, maybe not a huge one, you might be looking at very, very low double digits. If you get a tiny, tiny one, you might even be able to get it on kind of high single digits. I think if I'm not mistaken, that's kind of the prices that I'm seeing at the moment. If you do want the much more larger established forms, which didn't exist when I was buying them, so ones that you get pre-done pre as huge plants, usually from uh, kind of nurseries in the Netherlands now, I think they're usually on moss poles and things like that, those weren't available back then, those can be a bit more expensive, so kind of mid towards high double digits, but you're getting a much more established plant, usually at that point it has already got the pination, so the splits on the leaves, that's the name. But that is slightly different, but I think that is quite cool because it does take a while. And again, I'll touch on this on a bit more of another topic, but it does take a while for it to create those splits. So that is worth noting, depending on your patience levels, and if you've got the budget, it might be worth with the Epipremnum penatum to go for a more established, larger plant that's already got the pinations or the splits on the leaves. The other two, so the variegated Epipremnum penatum, that one I'm starting to see come into plant shops and some garden centers currently. That is a bit more expensive. So you're looking at kind of mid double digits, maybe for an okay established plant, mid towards mid low double digits, at least here in the UK currently. Back when I got it from a trade, I think it was even more than that. So you would have been high double digits. I don't think the variegated version ever went higher than high double digits. I don't think it was ever in the triple digits. It might have been, again, depending on the size of the plant. The Cebu Blue is interesting. So the Cebu Blue is really interesting. So when I got mine, I said I got it from trades. But back in the day when I had originally got the Panatum and I thought that it might have been for that split second, that it might have been a CB Blue. People who were trying to educate were people like Sarah at Eastern Tropicals. And she was actually saying, look, I've got a true CB Blue cuttings here. And they were a lot more expensive there. So they were kind of rooted cuttings, I think, at that point. And they were selling for high double digits into the triple digits. I think it might have even gone a bit higher than that at some point, at least here in the UK, because there were so few of them available. Now, that price has significantly dropped down now. And I think the Cebu Blue now might almost be as affordable as the Pinatum. So I don't think the variegated one has dropped too, too much. But I think the Cebu Blue did have a bit of a nosedive because it kind of came into the market and people propagated. And as I said, I got both of my variegated ones and the Cebu Blue through kind of swaps. That kind of gives you an indication that eventually it was going to come down. And I've said this on previous videos before, these plants, especially things like Epipremnums or Monsteras, that generally will grow okay and won't have too many issues and they will propagate quite easily. Fast is a different story altogether with some of these. The price will eventually come down. If you wait for long enough and as if there's enough demand that the market starts wanting to buy these a lot more, you will eventually get it for a bit cheaper. And it, you don't even need to probably wait for that that long. But yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say on availability. Let's move on to the next topic. So speed of growth of this one, and it's interesting because all three plants can be very, very different. Now, with the Epipremnum Penatum, I will say that is the fastest one out of all of them. And I will benchmark it against a Golden Pothos. So if a Golden Pothos in this space will bring out two to three leaves in the summer each month, 
the Epipremnum penatum probably won't match it entirely, but it'd be maybe one leaf less, if that makes sense. So maybe two leaves in the summer months, basically. So it does get going quite quickly, but as with all Epipremnums, as long as you can chop prop and refill the pot, you can get a very tall, very bushy plant relatively quickly because they will grow quite fast. So that is the Epipremnum penatum. The Epipremnum, and let's go, I'm trying to think which one of the other two. Both of the other twos are slower for me. However, I will say something when it comes to the slowness. So it's interesting because I can only make comments on the speed of both the variegated form and the CB blue form from a perspective of somebody who's only ever, there's a caveat to them I'll show you in a minute, only ever grown them in pond or semi-hydro. Interestingly enough, I'm trying to think now, the, the Panatum, I think I have only ever grown it in an aroid mix. I think it has always been in an aroid mix. I'm trying to think now, maybe I propagated it for a bit in pond, and I think the reason why I moved it back into soil, and it's doing well in soil, or my aroid mix essentially, is because I'd seen this issue with both the variegated and the Cebu. So with the variegated form of the Panatum, I would say, again, benchmarking as two or three leaves in the summer months from my golden pothos, the Albo maybe might get one in semi-hydro. Now, the reason why I was saying this was a bit of a caveat, I did get yet again another cutting of an Albo variegated Panatum from another plant swap, and I think this might have been a plant swap a year ago, a few months ago, I can't remember which one of the two London plant swaps I got it, and I'll bring it in so you might be able to have a look. So yes, this does have less variegation. Yes, the top leaf hasn't got that much variegation, but it's starting to get some pinations on the leaves, or at least some of the kind of, I don't know if you might be able to see, there are some splits that are happening on the midriff rib, and I don't think those are pest damage. This is in an arrowed mix and it is in a terracotta pot. This is a bit faster. So as I was saying before, if in semi-hydro this would have had one leaf a month roughly, this one might get two in soil. So it's a bit faster. So I will say that for it. Now the Cebu Blue I left till last for this section is for me the slowest out of all of it. And I will pick up the one that I was showing you just a moment ago. I'm trying not to drip water from the water reservoir everywhere. One, two, three leaves in a semi-hydro. That has been like that for the last four to five months. Which also brings me nicely onto why I might have not have had images on my plant care app for the Cebu Blue. So I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before. So if I get a full plant it will go into my plant care app. If I get cuttings or propagates or things like that that I need to do some work towards, I have got one section in my plant care app that I just call propagations. So I don't add extra pictures to that purely because with propagations, I was I started adding them into my plant care app and that takes a bit of time for me to add each of these plants in. And if they don't make it, then I'm just, I, I, just, I then just need to delete and I've, I've lost all the work that I've done. So plants that are propagates, when they get to full size and they're a bit more of an established one, then they get the honor of being added into the plant care app. Bit of a random thing that I do, but eh. that's probably why I don't have images for this because I have forever been trying to propagate the CB Blue. And as I said, it's mainly because I've been trying to do it either in water propagation or do it directly into pond. And I truthfully don't think that the Panatum likes semi-hydro. It doesn't hate it, it won't die off, it just doesn't grow particularly fast. Yes, the roots will get there and all these things, but I do think, you know when sometimes people caveat and say that semi-hydro is for most plants and most plants should be happy, but not for all of them. I think the Cebu Blue is an example. And also, fun side note, most of this has been a side note, but hopefully I think I'm getting comments from everybody saying that they don't mind my tangents. Interestingly, one of the hardest plants that I know people try to grow in the household is a jasmine. What I did last year is I bought a jasmine from the garden center 
check out, and I think it was a specific jasmine. I'll see if I can find which specific jasmine, and I'll add it at the top because it was being sold in the houseplant section. But even those jasmines that are sold in the houseplant section, usually you bring it home, it blooms, it either dies off or never really blooms again. That I have added into semi hydro with a reservoir straight away in the choose upon. And I am very happy to say that this year, a year later, it's actually just started to bloom. It's slightly confused because we're going through the fake spring at the moment in the UK where it's February and it's getting warmer and everybody who's lived here all their lives know, no, <laughs> this isn't spring yet. <laughs> Nature might be a bit confused at the moment, but it was going to get colder again, 100%. Um, but yes, all of this is basically say that I don't think the Penatum the variegated penatum or the seaweed blue are generally going to be fast growers depending on the medium. So specifically, if you're going to do semi-hydro, you want to keep it nice, small and compact and all these things and you've got rooted cuttings and you just want to get a bushy plant but not a leggy plant, it might be for you. If you want height and if you want all of these things, and granted, none of the ones that I'm growing in semi-hydro have I given them moss poles. So that might be what I'm doing wrong here. So had I have maybe given it a moss pole, it might be one of those things that really takes off when it gets something like a moss pole and it can put its aero roots in and grow up basically. But yeah, I think that's all we wanted to say about speed of growth. So ease of propagation. Again, this is pretty much a continuation of the previous topic because as I said, at least the Penatum variegated and the CB blue have forever just been variegates in my house basically purely because yeah as I said they don't ever grow fast enough this one I potted up as a single leaf and it was struggling and I was struggling when I got it six months ago so one two three four five six seven seven leaves in six months and to be fair it took nearly three months for it to root out properly, rehydrate the leaves and get going. So I would say that as long as you are propagating the panatum in something like soil or arid soil mix, you can start it off in water. That bit isn't particularly hard to start getting the roots. It's still very much like the, the, the golden pothos. It will start rooting. It just won't do very much. The golden pothos, if you've got it in water propagations, eventually it will also start creating leaves and all of these things. This one doesn't do it that much. Same thing would apply to the Penatum and the Cebu Blue 100%. So it is one of those things that I would say with all of three of these, start them off in something like water or damp sphagnumos, same way that you would propagate most other things or even propagate specifically a golden pothos, but as quickly as you see some roots, and maybe I'd say if you can wait for some secondary roots, it might take a beat, then move it straight into an arrowed mix. I would say if you want a big plant, maybe avoid going the semi-hydro route, which is what I've done. But I think that's everything I want to say about this section. Let's move into the next one. So coming into pests with this one, and it's interesting because as with most of the epipremnums in my care, I will say that I don't, they don't struggle with too, too many pests. I'm trying to think now if they've ever had any pests in my care. So I don't think they've ever had spider mites. I don't think. Maybe the occasional mealybugs because of nooks and crannies, but it never got ridiculous. I'm trying to think if they've maybe had thrips on occasion, but again, nowhere near the kind of level of fascination that if you've, if you've ever had thrips and you've got any form of monstera, <laughs> you know why I'm cringing, because for some reason, and I don't think it's just me based on what I'm hearing from people, thrips tend to love monstera. It doesn't matter what monstera it is, they will go for that first. So it's nothing kind of anything major. And it's, again, very similar to the golden pothos, which generally won't get too many pests. Yes, it could get spider mites, but generally they're manageable as long as you catch it early enough. Yes, it could get some mealybugs again. Same if you catch it early enough, it's fine. And maybe, maybe thrips on occasion. I'm trying to think white fly. The white fly does like it, especially when it's got lighter leaves as well, if they're a bit bleached from the sun just to sit on, but it doesn't create that much damage. So 
actually not pest free as a plant, but not too, too many pest pressures, at least in my experience. So coming into accessories and care and what I think for this plant, and I've touched on this already, but I'll go over it again. If you want a big plant, based on what I am seeing, and also from what I'm seeing online, what I'm seeing from my collection, this is one I think that would definitely benefit from a moss pole. And to be fair, it's similar with the golden pothos. It's the same thing. If you let these things trail, or even if you put them on a support stick, the foliage won't get large and it won't mature. It will still be relatively small. Maybe not if you put it on a support stick, you might not get the tiny, tiny leaves. And if you've just got it as a trailing plant, but it will never get to big, big leaves. So with the Pinatum, I mentioned this earlier on in the video, it does take a while to get the pinnation. So there's the splits on the leaves. And for me, it was about a year, a year and a half before it started to do that. And it only started to do that when I gave it, and it wasn't even one of the one of the better moss poles. It was one of those poles that you get in garden centers, which are wrapped in coir. And that was it basically. But yeah, it, it started to fenestrate. And I was running an experiment, and I have done another video, and I'll add up to here. I'd consider this a bit of an update from that video. It didn't work, that experiment. <laughs> but the experiment was, I've got fenestrations. If I chop it up, yes, the top cutting, which had the fenestrations, did keep the fenestrations. I, my wonder was, on the, the mid cuttings, who already had fenestrations, I knew that it was going to knock it back to a juvenile leaf for one or two leaves, but would it eventually fenestrate again? No. Is, is the answer to that experiment that I was doing. It went straight back into juvenile leaves and it took almost as long to get back into the pinations, for me at least. So that's one thing I would say. Moss pole would probably be a, a bit of a must on this plant if you want it to get fenestrations, if you want it to get large, large leaves. Now, the interesting thing, and I've touched this on availability as well, both the Cebu Blue, at least in my experience, and again, as I've said this, it was they're not the fastest growing plants for me because maybe I'm assuming it's because I'm growing them in semi-hydro, is if you can spend that tiny bit more money and you are buying them or getting them small with the hopes that you're wanting them to get larger leaves or to get fenestrations on the leaves or pinations, I see it's ingrained in me. I'm still calling them fenestrations. Um, I would say spend that extra bit of money, especially if you can find them now as slightly bigger, more established, more mature plants. Do that if you haven't got it yet. So hold off if you can, if that's what you're going for. As I said, the Pinatum will eventually get there. If you can give it a bit of patience and a bit of time, you will want it, it will eventually get there. That shouldn't be a problem. Again, with most of these in an aroid soil mix or a soil mix that is fluffy and airy that you like. I think I've always had the Panatum in terracotta, and it seems to love that. But yeah, if you do want these to be established, especially the variegated and especially the seaweed blue, if you can find it and that's what you're wanting for, do that. Because you saw with all of those plants, and I've had them for several years, I'm nowhere near them, A, being large enough, or B, being fenestrated or pinated, basically. Eventually, I'll get it. So that would be my top tip on that one. In terms of fertilizing, same as all my other plants in here, weekly, every week or every other week. Light levels for most of these, and the Cebu Blue is the one that I would say is quite interesting. I've always given it bright and direct light. I think it might prefer bright and direct towards medium light, just to not get bleached out quite as much. But to be fair, most of these plants are getting very, very high, bright, indirect light in my space, and they seem to love it. I think that might have been also why the Pinatum, the large Pinatum, has kind of got the splits where it did. Hopefully, I will be adding clips of that one, at least close-ups, or also from the outside, because it's stuck to a window, and it's kind of getting crowded in from the other plants. I still think it's mostly alive. <laughs> but the other plants are kind of crowding it at the moment. Um, but yes, hopefully that will survive, and I'm redoing the conservatory soon, so things are all going to have to move, so at that point I will judge it and see how things are going. 
But yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say on accessories and care. I don't think there's anything else now. Let's move into the final topic. So coming into final thoughts for all three of these plants. Now, I'll start off like I usually do and say, knowing what I know now, if I didn't have these plants, would I get them? And the kind of honest answer, and I'll do it individually for each one, the Panatum, yes, 100, mm, yeah, probably, probably. I probably wouldn't have it in this space. I don't think it needs to be in a conservatory. I think it's fine in household humidity, as long as you can give it the light, right light levels. I don't think any of these need to be in high humidity, at least in my experience. Um, but yes, I'll definitely get it. And it's another one that I would like to have as a bit more of an architectural plant in my house. But I would, for all three of these, the same thing would apply. I would get them as a bit more of an established plant and go from there. The Cebu Blue, I don't know. I probably would say no at this point. Like I keep seeing it and I keep, now that I've had it in my care, and maybe it's just because I'm disappointed on how badly it's done for me. As I said, it's not died off. It's just not done very much. I don't know whether or not, and again, I haven't ever grown it in an aroid mix, so I don't know if it's a plant that is a bit more interesting and a bit faster growing and all these things. Then I'm also curious to see whether or not it will lose. I don't know if you've got this and you've got a more mature kind of form of it with much bigger leaves and fenestrations. Does it lose some of that blueness from the leaf? Because if it does, then it turns into a bit more like an epipermanent penatum eventually just get a panatum. I don't think the blue is impressive enough for how much I've potentially struggled with this. And this is, again, my, based on my experiences. The variegated form is an interesting one. And that one would kind of fall in between the two. Would I maybe get it if I didn't have it knowing what I know now? Maybe. Maybe. And I say that because I have seen some larger, more mature specimens, ones that maybe have fenestrated a bit as well. And I don't mind them, but with the variegated form, the larger it gets, the more it starts looking a bit sickly with the variegation. Think a medium, medium variegated. And I've said this on that video that I was doing. It almost looks like a sick plant with its variegation. It's just, it really messes up the structure of the leaf and it looks, yeah, it just doesn't look right. I think this one generally, when it's more juvenile, you'll get kind of cleaner leaves and the variegation is there. But I think when you get larger, it starts getting a bit scraggly. So that's why I'm saying maybe, I don't know. But coming into scoring. So scoring is going to be an interesting one on this one. So the Epipremnum Penatum, from zero being the worst to 10 being the best, where would it sit for me? Five or a six? It doesn't really excite me. It's a good plant. It's a decent plant, especially if you've got kind of a, a mature specimen, a slightly larger specimen to have in your space. Slightly more interesting. I would prefer it over the golden pothos, if that makes sense. So I think it's it's much more visually pleasing to me. So that's one. The Cebu Blue, I would probably give a two or a three. I'm that disappointed with it, basically. I, I don't get the hype. And I think... For me personally, and com you are completely within your right to disagree if you love this plant, but for me personally, I would have been really, really salty had I have paid the prices that it was going at back then for a plant like this. It's just not there. Um, I know that there's a, there's a blue tinted fern, which is, it looks a bit like a, the blue on an oil slick, I think if that's called, I'll, I'll put it up here. It's one that a lot of people want to get or have got on all these things. That one seems a bit more interesting to me. So that one I am on the lookout at some point to hopefully add that to my collection. I don't think it's particularly hard to take care of, but it's a fern, so I don't know. So yeah, I think for that one, this one would have the lowest score for me. The variegated form, a four to a five. Uh, I generally don't mind variegated plants, but I don't know whether or not it adds an awful lot to the appeal of the plant based on how much slower it is to kind of get going in relation to the penatum. I'm kind of sitting here looking at my uh, Epipremnum enjoy. I'm looking at my Mandula pothos, and I've got my um, Marble Queen at the top there. And I know they are 
different, those are more interesting levels of variegation for me, rather than the panatum. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I'll, I'll stick to the the score that I gave it. I'm trying to like overanalyze this, but I think that's kind of where I sit with this. But yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say about this. I am sure there's going to be a lot of opinions on this video, so do drop them down below. Have conversations with each other nicely, please, respectfully. We're not all going to like the same plants, and we're also not going to all hate the same plants for the same reasons. <laughs> so be respectful down below. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.